we have seen several examples of enolates reacting as nucleophiles. They react with electrophiles such as acids, dihalogens, and alkyl halides. Enolates can also react as nucleophiles toward carbonyl compounds who have good acceptor orbitals, pi star CO. When an enolizable ketone or aldehyde reacts with a run-of-the-mill base like methoxide, we form an equilibrium mixture of the carbonyl compound and its enolate. The carbonyl compound is an electrophile, and the enolate is a nucleophile, and they can react with one another. The enolate reacts at carbon, donating electrons into pi star CO of the carbonyl compound. This makes a new bond between the alpha carbon of the nucleophile and the carbonyl carbon of the electrophile. The result is a beta alkoxy carbonyl, which can pick up a proton from the solvent to make a beta hydroxy carbonyl, or aldol addition product. Once in a while, the reaction stops here, but most often more happens. Since we're under basic conditions, there's a base present, and there's an enolizable proton here between the hydroxy group and the carbonyl. Deprotonation makes an enolate, and then a new step occurs. It's what I call a long-distance lone pair push. This kicks out hydroxide. Normally, hydroxide is a poor leaving group, and it is a poor leaving group in SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reactions. But in this context, elimination from an enolate, the power of the long-distance lone pair push, is enough to kick it out. Don't be tempted to draw this as an E2 elimination. This last step is driven forward by the fact that we make an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, a stable, conjugated system. This overall reaction, an enolate nucleophile reacting with a ketone or aldehyde to produce an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, is called the aldol condensation. The aldol reaction we've just shown is referred to as a self-aldol, in which the nucleophilic enolate is derived directly from the electrophilic carbonyl. Two other variants of the aldol condensation exist. Intramolecular aldol reactions involve an enolate from one part of a molecule reacting with a carbonyl group within the same molecule. These reactions produce new cyclic structures, usually cyclopentenes or cyclohexenes. The final variation is, a, is called a crossed aldol condensation, in which the enolate nucleophile is not derived from the same carbonyl group that serves as the electrophile. Crossed aldol reactions require special care to force the desired compounds into their respective roles as nucleophile and electrophile. They only work well under two conditions. First, only one of the two compounds may be enolizable. This is the compound that will serve as the nucleophile. Second, the enolizable carbonyl must be less electrophilic than the non-enolizable one. Otherwise, you'll just get self-condensation. So these reactions both work well. The nucleophiles are the enolates of enolizable ketones, and the electrophiles are non-enolizable aldehydes. But this attempted reaction does not. The molecule you'd like to be the nucleophile is also the more electrophilic of the two carbonyl compounds, so the major product is from self-aldol. We can sometimes circumvent these limitations by the judicious use of LDA. If we'd like a particular compound to act as the nucleophile, we can turn it completely into its enolate with LDA, and then carefully add the compound we want to act as the electrophile. This sequence requires an acid workup, because without one, we're stuck at the beta-alkoxy carbonyl. To summarize, 
In the aldol reaction, enolates and ketones or aldehydes react with one another to initially produce beta-hydroxycarbonyl compounds, which usually eliminate to produce alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. The aldol reaction can occur between a carbonyl compound and its own enolate, between a carbonyl compound and an enolate within the same molecule, or between an enolizable carbonyl compound and a non-enolizable carbonyl that is more electrophilic than the enolizable one.